This video is brought to you by Carter Enterprises, serving all your technology needs. And when I have to leave this back screw out or it's not going to clear again, these SSDs, it doesn't matter. It's not going to go anywhere and a little bit of rattling on this thing is not going to hurt it at all just because of the way they're designed. Since it's not any moving parts, I'm not concerned about it in the least. Especially once this is in there, that metal cage goes back over it and will hold it in place. One thing you don't want to do is leave any screws loose, so if they are loose, just pull them. Now, if this was a standard disc, I definitely would not be doing this, but since this is just an SSD, I'm not concerned about it. Because I know it'll be fine. Okay. Now I'm going to put the uh, screws back in this. If I can. Oh, you know it's one of those days when you got screws going sideways every time you try to screw them in. There's the hole. That's what I want. Come on. Don't screw with me today. Ah, get it? Don't screw with me. That was not intentional. There we go. Okay, those ones you do want decently tight though, so it doesn't move outside of its cradle at all. And you can see that those screws did make it a little bit tighter in some areas to screw this back in. Not a big deal. Once you get the screws started, they'll seat back in for you. And just make sure you don't round them out. These screws tend to be um, pretty soft for some reason. I don't like when they do that, but almost all the manufacturers are like that. Okay, I'm just going to throw it back together the same way she came apart. And don't forget, when you're putting this back in, down here, you've got your first of two connectors you've got to get back in. If you don't get <laughs> this one back in, you don't have a mouse, which is slightly important for the operation of the computer. Unless you're like me and you can do it all on the keyboard, but most people don't want to do that. Next one is the keyboard. best way to do this is lay the keyboard flat. Make sure you've got the connector open. Get this. Oops. Again, make sure the, key, the connector is all the way open. And then while you're holding it in there, seat the connector. Put this back. And just go along the top edge. And it'll seal back in. Just like that. Make sure you hear it click on each one, because that means it's sealed. And then you're going to want to flip it back over and get all the screws back in.
And then don't forget to put your RAM cover back on. Because you don't want to be walking around with your computers fly open. Just not a positive thing. It's a good way to get electrocuted too. At this point, this is just a anal retentive thing of my own. I get the battery back in, lock it in place. Just get that done. Now right, computer set up. Okay, the next part is going to be installing Windows 7. Um, and actually on this system, we're going to be putting Home Premium back on it. And for anyone that's wondering um, about Vista inst or 7 installs and things like that, since um, even Windows XP era, um, like the upgrade discs and things, every version of Windows is on the disk, except for if it's like 64-bit. This is only the 32-bit editions that are on here, because the netbooks only support 32-bit. Um, but I can, off this one drive, I can install any version from um, Home Basic all the way up to um, Ultimate which is nice because then I only have one disk to worry or one uh, drive to worry about for 32-bit systems. And then for like this situation, since I don't want she didn't want to buy a new license, which I can understand, and she doesn't need to, we're just going to use her current key. Um, the only caveat on that is you do have to call in, which is just wonderful because it won't do it over the internet. But you have to call into Microsoft and go through the activation procedure. Luckily, every time I've done one of these, it'll do it through the automated system. You don't actually have to talk to someone that can't speak English, which is a nice plus. Um, save you some headache. Uh, you definitely want to have these plugged in when you're doing this. You're going to eat a lot of juice, and a lot of times Windows... I don't know if uh, Windows 7 does it. I know that um, some of the other Linux operating systems will do it, but they will not install if you're not plugged into an AC outlet. Um, very first thing you want to do though when this comes up is get into the BIOS which is F2 on this machine and there's a couple reasons to do that. One, so you can make sure all your settings are correct if you're fluent in this. If you're not fluent in this I wouldn't go into your BIOS unless you absolutely have to because you can mess some things up in here pretty easily. Um, but like this, I want to make sure my ID configuration is right um, onboard devices, make sure everything's correct. Um, and with this, we're going to have everything enabled, so that's correct. Check CPU. Uh, that's one thing you want to enable. Um, right there, it's only disabled for XP, but since this doesn't have XP, there's no reason for it to be disabled. Um, and then boot priority. We want to make sure that my uh, USB disk is number one. There we go. Boot device priority. We want to make sure we have the scan disk. Then uh, CD-ROM is kind of stupid because it doesn't matter. Um, and that that will change back. I know you're all saying, well, what about when I pull out the card? Will I have to change this for my hard drive? No. That'll automatically set itself to the next disk, it, hard disk it can find, which will be your main drive, so you don't have to worry about it. Um, oops. Uh, boot settings config. I do not want quiet boot. Uh, personal preference, I hate quiet boot. Um, even for customers, I don't like it. I like being able to see and for them to be able to see what's going on with their system as it boots. Now we're going to go into the install here. And I know a lot of that on the screen was probably not very easy to see. Um, but it, it's pretty basic procedures. Um, I'll try to get some better pictures of it later. I don't. I can't do screen cap obviously because I don't have that set up here to do an external grab. But going through the Windows setup, you all know how to do this, so I'm not going to sit here and record a Windows 7 install. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, if you want some better pictures and things, I'm going to add some pictures in there. This has probably gone well over 10 minutes, so it's going to be at least a two-parter. Um, but any other questions you want, just ask, and I'll be happy to answer.